Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Mickey Mousecapades, brought to us by Capcom. While the game was published by Capcom in North America, it was actually developed by Hudson Soft, so you can't really compare it with the other Disney Capcom games such as DuckTales or Chippendale Rescue Rangers. In Mickey Mousecapades, we control Mickey and Minnie at the same time, and we're fighting our way through many worlds in order to save Alice from Alice in Wonderland. In the North American release, they actually went as far as to change many of the bosses in the game to not resemble characters from Alice in Wonderland, so this whole premise became much more confusing. While this may be considered one of the worst Disney games available on the NES, due to its very short length, as well as its pretty shaky controls at points, but overall Mickey Mouse Capades isn't the worst game you could experience on the NES. So here we go with Mickey Mouse Tapades for the NES, and we start off in the first level, and you can see I'm controlling both Mickey and Minnie walking simultaneously together by your controls. Now the good thing about the game is you actually do not get affected if Minnie gets hit, and we're going to be using that to our advantage when we fight different bosses later on in the game. First off, we're going to stop by this room, grab this treasure chest, and get our first star. The star is our projectile weapon and how we're going to be able to take out enemies in the game. We start off with only one, but later on the level, we'll grab another chest with another star, and that will actually allow Minnie to fire, which will also be able to help us take out certain bosses without Mickey actually getting any damage done to him. Throughout the entire game, there's lots of different areas to shoot randomly, and you may notice you're just shooting air, but all of a sudden, your projectile is being broken up. Keep firing at those spaces a few extra times, and you may actually find a hidden item. In this room, we grab our second can't-miss item, and that's the key. The key will actually be used to get to the other part of the level, which is actually above us, as you saw we had our first mini-boss of the game, which was that cat that was above the key room. As far as our strategy goes for a lot of the bosses in the game, it's really going to be try to do your best to avoid projectiles, but sometimes it's best just to run in and just keep blasting away as fast as possible. Usually you're going to have a good amount of health going into battles, as well as just lots of health items scattered throughout each of the levels. For a few of the bosses, there's a trick that we'll be able to use, like I mentioned earlier, with Minnie, but unfortunately that was not one of those bosses that we could do that with. We're going into this room, avoid the owl, and grab the treasure chest on the left. Sometimes, though, the treasure chest won't be the star, but you'll actually get another item instead of the star, in which case you'll have to back out of the room and come back in, in order for the chest to respawn and finally have the star. The worst of the creatures that you can come by in the game that will randomly generate from item spots is this evil owl, which will actually come pick up Minnie and take her to another part of the level. So I'm going to do my absolute best to avoid shooting a lot of random areas to expose any of those owls, so that I don't have to hunt down Minnie later on in the levels. Here's our first boss of the game, this evil witch. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to get Minnie by manipulating the controls, get her onto the top portion, and as you can see, move her over and just keep firing against this witch. The witch will be destroyed rather quickly, I take no damage, and then I can go up the ladder and grab the item from the treasure chest, our second key, which unlocks the door at the very beginning of the level that had key flashing by it when we first started this stage. As you can see with Minnie's control, while it was very helpful for us against that last boss, sometimes though it can cause you to actually not be able to climb up certain ladders or go to the next room because Minnie's not with you because she's still down on a lower level. That's one of the many reasons why the controls in the game are a little bit iffy. You're really going to notice this in later levels of the game, where there's gaps or pits to fall into. What'll happen is, if you actually make the jump with Mickey, but Minnie doesn't make it and falls into the pit, you will still lose a life, unfortunately. Which is one of the biggest problems and gripes I can have with the game. So basically, for your jumps, you're going to try to make them a little bit longer than you normally would when you're trying to jump from platform to platform. As we make it through the door that we unlocked with the key, go over by the exit, it flashes, we see Mickey and Minnie smiling towards the camera, and we move on to stage number two.
While the first stage of the game had us moving around the funhouse in order to find different keys to get to the boss, this level works like a much more traditional action game. We're just going to be moving from left to right, fighting all the perils along the way, and then facing the boss at the end. It's a very short trip, but you got to be very careful, like I mentioned earlier, making sure that you make full jumps so that many doesn't end up lagging behind and falling into a pit. Try to do your best to avoid the jellyfish, the waves, the other fish. Everything's flying at you. When you make it to the end, you face off with this alligator. Just keep blasting as much as possible, or if you want to use your turbo, with both stars firing from both Mickey and Minnie, it should only take a couple of seconds and only a couple hits to you to take out that alligator and move already on to stage number three. In stage number three, the woods, the gameplay gets changed up once again. Now instead of trying to find keys, or just going from left to right, we now are actually working our way through a maze. You actually have to enter the right tree in order to go through the many seasons in order to finally reach the end goal of the level. In the first area, we enter the second tree. Now in the second area, as you can see, it's now a different season as the background has changed. For the most part though, running through the level very quickly is probably the best strategy. Shoot things that you can, but just jump over anything else that gets in your way. The worst enemies are these honey bears that we're going to see a little bit later on. Enter this tree to move on to the fall season. Here's those honey bears that block your path, they're rather large, and they constantly are throwing rocks at you. So try to do your best to avoid the rocks and throwing your stars from a distance in order to destroy them. I recommend taking out those enemies before you move on. Now here we actually have to open up the hole in the tree in order to enter the door. Now in this part, the winter area, the tree that we have to enter was actually right next to the start sign. But unfortunately, you cannot open